I do a lot of work with electronics and reading the color codes on resistors is getting more difficult as my eyes get older. And if someone's just starting out with electronics and doesn't know the codes, well, it'd be nice to have a machine or a little gadget that helps you read the resistance. Now, of course, as an ohm meter, you can just connect the ohm meter to both sides of the resistor and see what the meter says. But it'd be nice to have something to just drop it in and read it automatically. So last week's wire, 3D printed wire holder that I showed to solder two wires together, this thing inspired me to make this. It's a drop-in resistor reader. It's got metal inserts and connections on the bottom to go to my ohm meter. So now I can drop in a resistor and the ohm meter will tell me what that resistance is. I'll show you how I made this on today's Filament Friday. And here's the design I started with. It's a solder cable holder by Thingiverse user Landon81. This is actually a really easy design to make. So the first thing I did was import the original STL file. So I just found the file, clicked import, and there I had it. So now I just needed to take away material to make it into the design I wanted it to be. So I dropped a work plane here on the top surface and then brought a block in to take out the material. Basically I put a block where I didn't want material, turned it into a hole, grouped that all together, and I had my basic design, just the two little grooves where the resistor's going to drop in. And <laughs> it looked really good. So now I just needed uh, to make the holes for the wires where the resistor's actually going to touch. So I brought in a cylinder, made it three millimeters by three millimeters, so it's slightly bigger than the copper wire that's going to go in here. Stretched it out, made it into a hole, and then here I manually centered it to the V, right in the center of the V, because there's really no line tool to line this to the V because it's part of a bigger design. So that's one thing Tink Tinkercad doesn't let you do. So I just eyeballed it, and once I had it close, I then duplicated it, and I just used the arrow keys and slid the other one over and eyeballed that one to the center. And now I had the two slots, were two holes where the wire would come through, and this is where the actual metal inserts that it's going to touch the resistor will be. So I grouped that together. So there's the two holes. You can see them. But now I needed to put a connector in the front. So I needed a hole for that. So I brought in another cylinder, turned it 90 degrees, and this is where I screwed up. I measured it, and it should have been 6.5 millimeters. I don't know why, but I set it to 8.5 millimeters and didn't catch it until after I printed the first print. But anyway, I recorded it here, so just imagine that it says 6.5 and not 8.5. But I brought it over to the front of the block and lifted it to about where I wanted it. And then here, again, I just eyeballed centering it to that hole I put in in the V. And then to make it easier, I made everything uh, a hole so I could see what was going on. And then I duplicated that front tube and used the arrow keys again slide that to slide that over to the left and then centered that. Now I needed an access panel in the bottom so I could solder these the wires together to the connector. So I brought in a block, dropped it down to about the height I wanted it, and then centered it and stretched it out. And then dropped it down just a little bit and made this into a hole and this will just take away material. So once I had that where I wanted it, I used the duplicate again, used the arrow keys, slid the second one over, centered that thing, and I pretty much have my design. This is pretty easy. So I just made the black uh, color again, left everything a hole, and then grouped everything together, and now I have my custom design. So the next step was to print this guy out, so I had to download the STL file so I could send it to Simplify 3D and slice it. I actually printed this twice. First time I did PLA, the second time I actually used ABS. So I'll show you settings here that I did for PLA. It's very similar. I did a 30% fill, and I did this all on my FlashForge Dreamer, which just prints outstanding. So I did a 0.3 layer height, which turned out really good. And then for uh, infill, I did a 30%. And then I didn't do any supports. Those blocks underneath, I said, the heck with it, just let it sag. But it really didn't. It did a good job. Um, I did put a skirt and brim around it because I didn't want the bottom to warp. And that's all I really did. I did the same thing for ABS. And once I had it, I printed it out. And here's the first one. This is in PLA. And this is the one that had the wrong size holes, 8.5 millimeter holes on the front. So I went back and printed it in black ABS with the proper holes. Now I needed to make the inserts. 
So I went and got a piece of electrical wire and just flattened the end of it. And then I took a second wire and flattened that one. So then I had my two um, inserts that would actually touch the resistor. But I needed to square these off and then put a notch in them. So I went over to my notcher, and you can do this with a file if you want, but I just uh, flattened them out and then put a notch in them, and it worked great. So it's nice having the right tools. So I took off all the insulation, so now I had bare copper wire. And I slipped it down into the 3 millimeter hole, and you can see here, this is the way I want it to line up. I want the slot to look like this, but deeper down into the groove. So I need to heat it up, so I put a clamp on the top here, just to hold it. And then I put another vice grip clamp on the bottom. This is the one I'm actually going to pull it through once it's heated up. So you can see there's one on top, one on the bottom. So then I brought out a lighter and started heating this thing up with the blue part of the flame. And once it was hot enough, I took off the top clamp and then just pulled from the bottom and kept pulling until it got to about the height that I wanted it and did the same thing to the other side so I had my two inserts and let me show you a close up here I didn't quite go as far as I wanted to but both of them turned out really good on my pile of extra junk parts I had these two banana jack connectors and they're perfect for connecting these wires that will go to the meter and I, these are the ones that I made the holes too big the first time, and these are perfect. Now I actually have to screw these in place. They push in a little bit and then screw in. So here they are fully screwed in. So now I needed to bend the wire and cut it so I can solder it to the connectors. And there they are both cut and lined up. So I brought in my soldering iron, and this took a little while because it's a smaller soldering iron. And they're all soldered up, ready to go. Here's the finished product, all soldered up. It looks really good, but does it work? So the first thing I got to do is hook it up. So I'm going to connect the red wire to the red pin, black to the black, and then I'll put black to the common on the meter and red to the signal. And then I've got this meter set to ohms, and it's an auto ranger. I've got it set to auto, so it's going to automatically adjust for the resistance we're going to measure. So this first one is a little... 1 8 watt resistor and I know it's 1k so let's just test it and see what it says now it's jumping around and it's because it needs a little bit of pressure on it and there's the reading 975.975k so that means it's a 1k so that's right so now let's try the next one this should be a 10k and this one will need a little pressure. This one says it's 9.85, 9.85K. So that's a 10K. Now you may be wondering why isn't it showing 10K? Well, it's because these are 5% resistors. So there's a tolerance around them. So in this particular case, it's a 10K resistor plus or minus 5%. So it's 10K plus or minus 500 ohms. So if we had a reading of 9.5 or even 10.5, that would be within spec. It's typically going to be tighter than that, but it would still be good if it's in that range. So in this one, we're pretty good because we're at 9.9, 9.8. Let's jump around a little bit. I just need to press down. And so we're at basically 9,810 ohms. So that's a 10K. Now it gets a little more interesting. Out of this big drawer of resistors, I tested a few, and here's one that it looks like it's orange, blue, red. But when I put it on there, it's 4.67 or 4.7K. So it's not blue, it's purple. It's orange, blue, or orange, purple, red, or 4.7K. So the meter is better than my eyes. And this one really threw me off. Because this one looks like it's brown, green, orange. And that would mean 15K. So when I put this thing on there, look what it shows. 75.9K. In other words, it's 75K. And the reason it says it's 75K is because that first ring is not a brown. The first ring is a purple. Purple is a 7. So if I built something with this, thinking it was a 15K, put it in my circuit, 
it may not work. In fact, it probably wouldn't work because it'd be too much resistance because it's actually a 75k ohm resistor. That's why I wanted this stand. Even when my eyes were really good and I wasn't quite as old, there's sometimes these colors are hard to read. And if you buy some of these resistors through a Chinese supplier, the color variation is huge compared to the way it used to be when you would buy from a local US supplier. So this is incredibly handy to have for my meter. It's cheap, it's easy, and it works great. So this was a very handy print, and I'm gonna keep this around for a while, and it worked really well. I went through that drawer full of resistors, sorted them out, put them in the proper drawers, because I've got cabinets full of resistors, and this made it quick. So I like it, I'm gonna keep it. It worked out well. Now I printed this in ABS, but you really don't have to. You can print it in PLA, you can print it in PETG, or pretty much any plastic you want. And it might be easier in one of those softer plastics to get the metal inserts to go in because the ABS, of course, takes a higher temperature to melt. The other, like PLA, wouldn't take as much. So it might be easier to do that. But I like print with ABS a lot of times and this is gonna last a long time. So if you like this project, give it a thumbs up. If you want to build it, the Thingiverse files will be in the description below. And if you want to try out different filaments, try them out at Matter Hackers. There's a link in the description below. And if you click on that link and buy through Matter Hackers, they actually give money back to the channel. They support the channel through affiliate links. So it's a way of helping the channel without maybe joining me on Patreon. But if you do want to join me on Patreon, there's a link up here somewhere. A dollar a month goes a long way. And if you want a Filament Friday sticker, just send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. In fact, I got one here from Todd Glander. Todd Glander sent me a self-addressed stamped envelope. You're getting two Filament Friday stickers. I'll send it out in the mail tomorrow. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.